So many of you have probably seen a train such as this. Runs around your Christmas tree, comes with a little bit of track, and uh, you just uh, run around the tree. Now, as you know, this you've seen before is the Mighty Hauler train car. And this is a piece of track from the train set we just looked at. Now, if we can line these up more or less, you'll find that our Mighty Hauler will run just fine on this section of track, which means you have probably actually seen a G-scale sized train set. Now, since we have this set and just tons and tons of this track, I figured since it is a G-scale, and most of you probably have it, that we would go ahead and make the Christmas train on camera and bring you guys along for the ride. All right, so we have just a bunch of turn pieces. And then we have this piece, which if you pay attention to our logo, is the, it's not the same piece, but it is the same type of track. And then we have a bunch of turn pieces, but we don't have hardly any straight pieces. And then there's the loco, and then there's the other locomotive. So now we begin to set it all up. All right, so we have completed the loop that will follow the base of the track. And it goes under the tree, comes back around, loops, and it comes right back to where it started. So right now we are working it bumped over here on our first test run, so that's what we're trying to work on now. Alright, so we got the train working, as you can see it come around the bend. We got the tenders and all the other cars working. So it then runs behind the tree. And then it continues forward. And so it's working good. And so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to, in this area here where it has to go up a step, we're going to brace that. Because as you can see, when the train comes over it, it weighs just enough to make it flex. So we're going to work on that next. Okay, so I did want to clear up some questions that you might have after watching the video. Number one. Um, you might have noticed a whitey, white substance appearing on the wheels that is a lubricant to make them run better. The train is about 15 years old, so it does need some. Turn it on via the bell. It does have forward, back, and stop via the remote, and also has sounds. I did not record any sounds. You might have noticed some bracing in the last shot. The train does weigh a decent amount, and so that was needed so the track wouldn't bend and break. Another thing that you might have asked yourself, well, why couldn't you just go ahead and buy one of these and set it up outside? Well, you probably could. It cost you way less than what we spent on ours. But the other thing is it wouldn't last very long. These are meant to run around the Christmas tree in a circle for roughly 25 days of the year. So they're just not meant to run outside or for long periods of time. Although I have had this one for a while. It does run on 6C batteries, but it still would probably need a lot of batteries, making it not so cost-effective to run. Another thing is, our train car, as you saw at the beginning, the Mighty Hauler, has dual wheels at the front and back. These only have a single wheel at the front and back. These are also made out of a cheap plastic so they would not last very long out in the elements. Another thing is the track. The track on the left is the Pico track, and the track on the right is the stuff that comes with the train. As you can see, it flexes very easily, where the Pico track does not flex hardly at all, and I'm bending it pretty hard here. 
Another thing is the widths are the same, but the rail ties are made out of completely different. It's cheap plastic on the right, and the other one is made out of a slightly better plastic polymer. The other thing is the rails on the right are made out of plastic, and the ones on the left are made out of brass. Well, I hope this cleared up some questions, and I hope to see you next time on the G-Scale Train Guys. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And Merry Christmas. See you next year.